Hey, welcome on in, guys. Tobin here with you, and thanks for checking out the channel. Hope everybody's doing fantastic out there in Heat Nation. If you guys could subscribe, that'd be great. Um, just going to do a little uh, Miami Heat preseason wrap here, as it did come to an end last night. 114-109 win over the Memphis Grizzlies. Heat finished the preseason 4-1. and one. Um, Very productive preseason, I thought, for the Miami Heat. They went into this thing. Uh, they wanted to tune some things up on the offense. They obviously were hellacious on defense. The only game that they lost um, was the the first one against the Hornets. And I really thought that the last piece that you wanted to see in this preseason, you got both of them in this game individually. So here's what I thought was important from the Memphis Grizzlies uh, win from Miami, uh, win in one fourteen one oh nine. First off, uh, you got a great performance from Kalel Ware, and this was an interesting one because Memphis was playing most of their starters. They did not have Jaron Jackson playing today, but Bain, uh, Aldama, Edie, John Morant, Marcus Smart, they were playing their guys, and they played their guys essentially, you know, like the Heat. They played them in waves. But you got to see some fun matchups out there of some young Heat players up against guys who are going to play. Then you have a showdown of Edie and Kalel, where it's like everybody is all over Edie. I mean, they are, you know, for a guy, everybody first off was like, I don't know if I want to draft the guy. And now everybody, he's on the Memphis Grizzlies. It's like, oh, he is going, you know, sneaky Roy, sneaky, sneaky rookie of the year candidate. Um, guaranteed if the Heat were able to get Zach Edie that it would be completely dismissed. So, Kalel Ware, who's, you know, had a pretty quiet preseason. You know, his minutes were limited there to those fourth quarter spurts. It was nice to see Kalel go out there and, first off, get to lead the team in shots. Him and Pella both took 17 apiece. But you got to see a little bit of everything for him. And I thought against Edie, you know, he got the chances to tie him up, get some get some turnovers, and then you got to see Kalel go out there and be really aggressive and so he goes out there one of the most efficient game in the world especially for a big man but i thought he got to show but you also got to throw in the mix there they took three attempts from downtown he got finally one to drop late um and then was a big huge piece and then coming back to win this game now that wasn't against the memphis grizzly starters but even still the miami heat you know there could have been a point where they were getting blown out at any point in this in this performance and they weren't so I thought that was a really strong thing from Kalel. I don't know what his role is going to be early on with this team, but that's okay. I think I think him not being in the mix early will be all right. I think a lot of people were under the impression that they were going to pull uh, what Memphis is doing with Edie because Edie's probably going to start for them or at least get a lot of significant minutes. But you do have to keep under advisement. Edie is um, a little older. He is a little more polished and is is in the you know and and i think that's just what it is you know you i told you guys going into this with uh with eric spolster that he's not necessarily going to hand over the reins to a rookie center right away it's just not in his nature to do so it doesn't mean the opportunities won't be there i would say after watching the preseason would i like him to play over let's say if it gets to a thomas bryant on certain matchups yeah absolutely i, I absolutely would um, I, I would like to see what Kalel is going to be as opposed to Thomas Bryant. I'm right there with everybody. I'm not, you know, going to bull bleep you. I'm not going to say, oh, no, no, no. You got to do whatever Spolster says. I have, I've been, you know, I've known this with Spo and, and have argued these things with Spo back to the days where I used to do demo shows back in the day and argue Michael Beasley getting more minutes. You know, there's just, he doesn't trust youth, especially when it's not a backcourt guy. So... I'm not surprised to be where we're at, but I thought that he had a really nice performance today, um, you know, to see how he was getting his teammates uh, in in, uh, in great spots, the way he was able to force turnovers on Zach Eady. Uh, there was a battle there back and forth where he was found Zach Eady. So I thought that was a fun little enjoyable back and forth. Uh, you got to see, though, some big time lobs from him. Isaiah Stevens had some nice finds for him. He had uh, some very, very authoritative dunks in this performance. Um, so I, I loved it from Kalel. And Kalel used the uh, the line after the game. He says, you know, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. And so I think that means for this team, like, don't be afraid to make mistakes. 
don't be tentative and 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 be okay with not necessarily getting everything you want right away. It will come. Look at a guy who I thought was truly the best part of today's game. And that was Nikola Jovic. Nico um to me, though he only played 14 minutes, he finished with 11 points, 4 assists, uh was 1 of 3 from downtown. It's probably been the biggest crux is that the looks have been there. He hasn't been afraid to shoot him, but he hasn't been nailing him. He's bemoaned how he's got to hit those shots. But today, it wasn't the three-point shots that I was excited about. One of the things that I've wanted to see with Nico is in a slowed-up part of the game, if, if it gets to the half court and he's got to go make a play, can he do it? And he had a, a couple of moments in these games um, where he was able to draw through contact. One of them was on Edie. I would forget. I think it was uh, maybe it was Pippen who was the initial defender on him. But basically through two guys, he beat them both up, brought the heat to within three. And then I believe the possession then after that, he had John Morant on him. And, I mean, he blew by John Morant, who was fouling him left and right. And he just, boom, bullied and punished the smaller guy like he said he was planning to do this season. I loved seeing that. And then finally ended it with finding Drew Smith for a three ball. Drew Smith with a couple from downtown in this game. That, to me, with Nico, I was like, cool. that Because there is something about the ball in that kid's hands that is really exciting. Really exciting. I don't know how much we'll get to see the ball always in Nico's hands, but I think, especially in a in a half court setting, but I really like seeing that. I was like, oh, that kid is stronger. He is not scared. He is going to use his physicality. That to me was really really encouraging from Nico in this game. So, those are the things to keep an eye on with uh with this. And then you know I think the other thing that was great is yeah you you never allowed this uh you never allowed the Memphis Grizzlies to go out and get to a a huge lead on this one and so you were within striking distance by the time you got I think the heat were within six or so by the end of the fourth quarter when everybody was done and then um they just went on a crazy ass run man they went on a crazy ass run Keisha Johnson Zion Poland had a great connection with steals and lobs they both got each other on uh, on a couple of possessions Miami I think went on a 17-2 run at one point then there was one where Kalel Ware got back-to-back possessions where he got a steal. The huge one was to Josh Christopher. That really put it out of reach. Um, he also hit a corner three. Kalel was a, a monster demon in this fourth quarter to give Miami this game ultimately. So that was an end to your uh, your preseason run. And, like, you know, I think as you guys have seen the recaps that I've done on these, it, it could not have gone better. Um One of the things, I didn't check even what the steals, the final numbers were on those. Uh, Miami finished with, how about this? Is that, wait, am I looking at that right? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Wow. How about this? Miami did end up finishing with a preseason high 16 steals in this game. I will say this was one of those games where it got a little bit weird there at the end, but yeah, uh, everybody getting their hands on the basketball to turn this one around for them. Pullen, Stevens, Josh Christopher had four steals in this game. Kalel Ware had two. Keisha Johnson had two. And then the starting lineup, Pella had a couple. Thomas Bryant had a couple. And Haywood Heisman had a couple. So they were able to keep pace. That was a crazy, crazy thing. So the Miami Heat finish the preseason with, what, 76 steals? Sheesh. Very impressive. That was um, that was definitely I would say the the steals, taking the basketball from their opponent, and the pace of the offense. Those were the two themes of this. You had Jimmy Butler having a lot of fun. You had Bam Adebayo not shy to shoot three. You have Tyler Hero living in efficient shot land. You have uh, Terry Rozier. You know, didn't really get his shot going too much from downtown. A lot like Nico, but I. I think from a fit standpoint, you know, found guys, him and Tyler do not look like there is any any clutter there. Um, Pella Larson had big moments in this preseason. 
uh, I'm trying to like, like you come out and what is the negative about this Heat team? I, I think the thing that you don't, uh, I think Jaime and Duncan, uh, you know, show tremendous chemistry with each other. Kevin Love looks like he's got a little bit in the tank. Uh, Drew Smith having to deal with everybody inexplicably hating that he's on the roster. You know, today in this preseason finale was efficient, hit a couple of threes, um, you know, 10 points. I got to think that's his high for the uh, for the preseason. You know, I just think it, it went as smooth as you could hope for if you are a Heat fan, um, especially from the starter standpoint, because the whole purpose of this, and Eric Spolster said it from the get-go, was to see that unit together. He got a lot of time with it. They played on back-to-backs. They played extended minutes. They're going to get right back at it for practice tomorrow. Um, as I record this on a, on a Saturday, and yeah, I just think that they they, they touched a lot of bases. They have set their roster. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna do another video on the roster decisions. Not a lot of surprises, and then figuring out where we think everybody lands on the whole depth chart of this thing. So. But uh, your Heat, they finished the preseason 4-1 and one with a 114-109 win over the Grizzlies with big showcase games from Kalel Ware and especially uh, and, and Nikola Jovich.